Just functional bet. Have the deep rock drill. I'll put a phone number phone number on the screen now. And I'll do a white paper on what I did to take care of this thing. In the first review that I did, this piece right here was out of whack. Not very much, just a very, very tiny bit. And this section here would neither raise or lower properly. It would always jam. It, it just flat wouldn't work. I took it, I called the man, he said bring it back, they'd fix it, they fixed it, life is good. It still didn't work quite properly, and I was having a lot of trouble figuring this out. So I got a second pair of eyes on it. What we found, I used a plumb bob, and I dropped the plumb bob from the um, pulley up there down here. You see the yellow dot right there? Let me zoom in on that little thing. See that yellow dot? <clears throat> That's right about where the plumb bob was hitting. And so I checked the top for square. The top is square with the bottom. And it doesn't make sense. Because this is slightly off from here to the other side. It's not quite in center, but it's real close. But this thing right here is way off of center. And it's also cut at an angle so that the pull is on. This piece is off center and it's cut at an angle like so. It's going hard to the left. And as a result of that, the lift is over here to the left and nothing would work. I mean nothing. Now, I called the guy up. And he said, grease those pipes. He said, have them dripping in um, lubricant, like axle grease. Or if you have a grease gun, put some of that, put on a pair of rubber gloves and slather it up. <clears throat> I didn't do that initially. I used Deep Creep by Seafoam because it's a super lubricant penetrator. And the machine basically started to slide up and down, but it was still jamming a little bit. So what I did was I came back and I put a, um, I believe it's a three-inch C-clamp on here, and I clamped this cable onto my C-clamp, and I moved it around just a little bit until I got this cable in line with this dot. It started going up just absolutely smoothly, and it was coming down smoothly for the most part. Not absolutely perfect, but if, if it had grease it probably would have been very smooth. Again, it was deep creep and it was just enough to get it slide to get it to slide as if I had to break this thing down further, I didn't want these pipes all covered with grease because it would just be a bear to get all that cleaned up to work on this. What I did was I came back and I used a tool, which I'll show you in just a minute, and I put a tap on here where my center should be. After that, I drilled it. I started a pilot with a 1 16th, and I drilled in about 1 8th of an inch just, just to get my hole going. Then what I did was I came back with a 1 8th inch drill, and I plunged that through as straight as I could. And after that, then I came back, I drilled it with one of those pyramid-looking drills, which I'll show you in just a moment. After I did that, I now had two holes side by side, so it would give you the binocular view like you have in the movies when somebody looks through a binocular. They try to make it look like, you know, you have the two loops there. So I went and I got a smaller shackle, because I'm only going to drill about 10 feet to see if this is working. If it's working, then I'll go ahead and enlarge this hole. I'll come back, I'll weld this closed, and then I'll, I'll put it back to the original condition. The only modification that I've made to this thing, outside of drilling this hole, is I put a thimble on my cable to make sure that it couldn't uh, bend too tight. When cables are pulled too very tightly, it actually damages them, and this thimble will prevent that from happening. 
sorry about that, this thimble will prevent that from happening. So I would tell you to go ahead and put a thimble on it. Now when I was drilling with this thing originally, and this was just a test to see if everything was working right, that's when I discovered the problem here. And before I started drilling again, I got this problem of the um, drill head carrier um, sliding properly. I got that dealt with. But when I drilled before, I drilled about five feet. I used a very small pit for the drilling, way too small for this thing. And I also didn't shovel out the dirt, and that was a problem. I'm going to do a white paper at this point and explain why you need two large pits. The other modifications that I made was I put a cam lock receiver male and a cam lock um, connector female on there and those pieces that you see are the cam locks the pieces that stick up. This makes it very quick to connect and disconnect. The other way, it was actually threaded, but I didn't have a way to thread this in without having to constantly turn this 25 foot uh, heavy hose that I've got, and it was a pain. Now I've also got these on the water pump. Down here at the bottom, I have the white cap that I spoke about. That white cap is just to protect the threads. This has been fairly cleaned up from the rain. This stripe you see right here is where the deep creep hit the plastic bag. The plastic bag is on this motor because it's been raining almost every night. And at this point, I'm about ready to say this thing is ready to start drilling. Now, when I, when I do my first uh, well, I'm not sure if I'll film that or not, but I'm going to only be drilling like 18 feet. This shackle is more than capable of handling it 3 8 This is the original 3 8 cable that the machine came with. This is the punch that I used. The way this thing works, you take this, and what you do is you press down, and then it snaps, and it'll put a divot in your metal plate where you can then put your drill in and start drilling. This is the drill head that I was talking about that I used to go ahead and drill the rest of this. Once I had my 1 8 inch hole, then I very slowly worked this into the metal. And I did run out of battery and had to put it on the charger for a little bit. The largest hole at the end towards the drill itself is a half inch. And I slowly plunged this in. Now because of the thickness of the metal, I did cut from both sides from time to time just to help speed things up. But this is what I was talking about with the pyramid type um, drill. These are actually these are actually pretty good. This is from Harbor Freight and they're cheap enough at Harbor Freight that if you wear them out you haven't lost anything. So far I've used this a lot and it is still continuing to cut well. Now I'm not sure how it's going to do after, um, after drilling on that metal over there because that had been cut with a torch and there were a bunch of times when instead of constantly being in metal, it, in contact with metal, it was banging onto an open space and that may have damaged this. Even if it did, it's not a loss. These are my pipes which are used as the guides. This is where the error was, and this pipe on the left-hand side was, was not straight. Took it back, they straightened it up, life is good, right? I came back, I put it on, it, slide, it slid okay with no weight on it. When I put the weight on it, this side would always catch. It would, um, 
it would lift more on the left than on the right, and it would jam whenever it was trying to descend. So I called the man. This is where he told me to put grease on it. It's kind of, sort of, but not exactly working. It's not acceptable as far as working goes. So I put the plumb bob on it, which I told you about, and I got my center line, my center line, which is just off center of the length of this. Now this is 20 inches, and this center line is just off by just a fraction of an inch. So I've checked the top. Everything is square. I mean, it's, it's mint. I checked the bottom. Everything is square. It's mint. I checked the alignment on this. It's mint. Everything's lining up, but my center line is over here, and my the, the hole that's been punched is over here, and it's canted to the left-hand side. So my moment of float, uh, my moment to trim an inch, and my uh, center of effort is to the left-hand side or port. So it's not working right. This is where I drop the plumb bob. I get my center line, and I bore a hole right through here. Now if you remember I told you that my drill is biting air. When it's in this open area it and it contacts this, it caused it to go a little bit crooked. Not bad, but a little bit. So when I get ready to weld this up, I'm going to have to plug this hole up and I'll be drilling from this end on this side on my center line and hopefully I'll get a very clean straight bore. Now this is this is not a big deal. I mean, my degree is in green energy, and one of the classes that I took was on manufacturing. And sometimes things happen. It's not a deal. I mean, life goes on. You know, uh, as they say, if you can't, if getting a bloody nose on the playground is a little too rich for your blood, stay in stay in the in the classroom. Okay. With that said. These are my guide pipes. This is my bar. The thing was slightly out of whack here, and the lift drag is to the left. Now, sliding over here to this, what we have is we have a side view, and this is that binocular look I was talking about. We have two holes. This is a half inch. This one is larger. These are my guide pipes. I bored through. I put my lubricant on the on the pipes, and it's working just fantabulous. No complaints here. So this is my white paper on that. And Now let me explain about the um, the pit and why you need a large one. Actually you need two of them and I will explain that. Alright, let's examine the borehole and why you need two large pits. Here is our borehole and this is a, sh a shallow pit, maybe six inches deep, that goes into our first dig. Our first dig should be three feet by three feet by at least two feet, maybe three feet. So basically one meter time one meter cubed, right? Then you have another canal. It doesn't have to be as exaggerated as this is. I did this just so you could see my writing. But you have another pit that comes over here, which is roughly the same size, a meter by a meter by two to three feet. Now what happens is when you're boring into the ground, you're getting cuttings that are being flushed up by the circulation pump and these cuttings are coming over here into this. I'll make a video on what you need to be doing with these cuttings as they're coming up. But what's going to happen is you're going to come into here and they're going to settle out. As they settle out, this pit fills and you have to shovel this out frequently. As I noted before, my first pit was shallow, very small, because I was just making sure everything was working, but I didn't shovel it, and as a result of that, I had kind of a little bit of a problem on my bore, because this needs to be clean water, or bentonite clay water, fl flowing down through here so that the stuff has somewhere to go and you're not pushing uh, mud through there. Now, as it as the mud settles out in here, because you're going into this large area, and um, you can look this up, there's a lot of videos. The water that's coming in here, whatever it is, now my pump is 150 gallons a minute, so it's pushing 150 gallons of water in there, and, it, and the, the clay and cuttings have to have time, the sand has to have time 
to settle in this pit and then the water flows over here it has more time to settle before it's being sucked out and it's circulating around. If this thing is one meter square there's about um, 27 cubic feet of water so 27 times I believe 8 6 or 8 gallons per cubic foot I don't remember at this moment you have this much water in here and then it flows over here has an equal volume then it's picked up taken to the mud pump and then it's recirculated into the bore to flush out you're gonna have to dig this one out frequently if you're drilling it's just the way it is now 